A lot of days you wake up in the morning, you look out the window and you think, what's today's obstacle gonna be? You know, the key to being a great guide a lot of times is using your experience to overcome challenges. Oh, big amberjack, you take this. That's a badass game fish. Cobia? Cobia fishing, a lot of times all or nothing. I mean, Cobia fishing in January. Oh. You know, winter in Key West is one of my favorite times of the year. For me, coming from California, especially this year, it just gives me a break from the rain, the cold. Our fishing season is pretty much reduced to nothing. And even as popular as Key West is during the winter, there's always times when you can kind of get that last minute reservation, a cheap flight, and get down here and really enjoy this time of year for yourself. Well, buddy, we have had some uncharacteristically cold weather characteristic yeah. cold weather for this I'm wearing time a sweatshirt, here. buddy. This is Key West. It, this is San been, Diego here. It's been cold, and one thing our bait does not like is cold weather. For the most part, our water temperature stays pretty stable, but you do have these big cold fronts that push down and drop that water temperature quickly, too. So what we generally do is we try and keep some in the pens for when it does cool down, but if the water cools down too much while it's in the pen, it doesn't like that either, and it starts to kick. But we do have some bait here. My plan for today was to go up in the Gulf, fish on some of these wrecks I've been fishing on. You might see some cobias, jack crevals, getting on some top water stuff today. I mean, we've been catching some big, beautiful mangies, and yellowtail, and jacks, and cobia, and all this stuff. The Gulf's always fun, man. I don't think we've ever had a bad trip up there. Well, you just have so much variety up yeah. there. When it, you know, when it's good, it's good. You know, Rush is blessed with a ton of options. He's always got a trick up his sleeve. You know, being a local boy, he can kind of predict what's going to go on, whether you fish out front or you go into the Gulf. But this time, there was a new challenge. A lot of days you wake up in the morning and look out the window and you think, what's, what's today's obstacle going to be? There's always going to be one. This is a great spot. This is an old shrimp boat that sunk not even that long ago. I want to say maybe a dozen, 15 years ago. This is like perfect right here. Just in front of it. We're going to be chumming back to it. You know what I mean? Anywhere you fish, water temperature is really going to have a big impact on the fishing itself. We're fighting some colder weather. Colder yeah. than we like to see. Yeah. 68.5, that's cold for us. Yeah. You know, 72 is the breaking point. I don't like to see anything under that 72. You know, by us, we're chasing tuna and stuff offshore, and sometimes a one degree temperature break, or even less than that, a half a degree, can mean all the difference between crushing it and having a long day. This cold weather's got everything pretty docile. I threw a few baits in, I didn't see anything pop on them. That tells me we're gonna have to work at it okay. just to get them going. So I think if we start hooking a few fish, just firing some fish up, letting them know, you know, if there's other fish around feeding. Yep. That might whip them up. Yeah, we'll get them going. We just gotta put some baits in front of them and hopefully they eat. If you fish with me enough, you're gonna hear me say it over and over again, especially when fishing slow. We gotta stir something up. A little jack or blue runner there. Little guy. But action, right? Get it started. What does that mean? That means we got to liven this party up. I mean, this party's dead. Besides that blue runner. Whoa, that's a tournament model. We might turn him and we might put him down on that big rod later. People want to come to the party. Nobody wants to miss out. So if somebody's eating, I don't care what it is. It might not be your target species. It's going to bring everybody to the party. Rush kind of had it in his mind that it was going to be tough, but I think he figured as long as we stuck with it, we saw a couple of the right indicators, and we would be okay. Where's he at? He's right back here, right in front of the boat. Stop in front of him. I don't see him. Right here, right in front of the boat. Well, that's perfect. Does that say he's swimming right at it? Reel on it a little bit just to, to eat it. I don't even think he saw it. 
Oh, another one rush. Oh, Is that, oh, that's the other way. Hit him or no? Reel on nice and slow. That's oh, he's there. Hard. That's him. That's another one. Yeah, it is. He just turned. He dove and then came back around. Another bait, please. One thing I know about fishing with Ali is redundancy with my tackle is key. I have to have a lot of stuff ready to go at any given moment. I don't see him. I don't see him. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Well, that is a good cove. Yeah, he he's, he's about he's to eat it. Eat it. Oop. Oop. <laughs> like a vacuum he's swimming back here eating another he's gonna eat another one i mean i felt it come right out of his mouth what the hell i gave ali a, a few opportunities to hook this cobia how does that come out of him got him right there look that's him right there yeah he did it out i think no no he did what in so after seven or eight times of ali missing this cobia i figure i'm just gonna jump in there hook him real quick game over right Oh, big amberjack just ate this. Big old amberjack. Not so much. So cool though, you're just sitting here just kind of doing nothing, what'd I say? Yeah. Just gotta start catching a few fish and it just stirring Wait. up that commotion. Oh, look at that machine light up too. I know, I just saw it as I was walking forward, it's lit. Every species has their own range of water that they'll work in. With this water temperature being so cold, you just never know what's gonna happen. I mean, this is so foreign to us. We don't fish in 68 degree water. That's what would normal it... for you, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, our stuff all starts at 62, is kind of our magic number. On the lower end of that temperature scale, you're gonna have your bigger fish, right? Bigger animal, more blood, more flexibility. They can do, they have more options. And on the other side of the pendulum is some of the warm water species, the little yellowtail snappers, the mangrove snappers we were hoping to catch, and even the groupers and muttons. They like that really warm water. How you doing, buddy? He's gonna be good and whoop by the time I get him up here. You or him? Both of us. So we weren't surprised when we started to see some jacks come to the surface, see a shark that always turns into a cobia, see some of these bigger fish that were actually willing to take a bait and bit pretty good. Ugh. That's not a small one. That's my version of a, a hamachi. <laughs> the brown That's a, hamachi. That's a big hamachi, buddy. Just because you go out there with this idea in your head that you want to catch this one species of fish, it doesn't happen. Woo, he whooped my butt on that rod. That's a badass game fish, man. There's just uh, no way I mean, around it. Doesn't mean there's not other stuff to catch. There he goes. Woo! You need to get you one of those. No, I'm good, buddy. I'm you good. You need to get you one of those, son. <laughs> that was a lot of work. All right, let's get that cobia now. I can't say enough great things about our new home here in the Keys. You know, this Ocean's Edge Marina and Resort is awesome. Awesome rooms, awesome service, awesome people. The marina is beautiful. You've got great access, whether you want to go into the Atlantic or the Gulf and everything you need, you know. I'll stay here for four, five, six days and I'll never even leave the property. This is a killer spot to learn how to fish in Key West and enjoy everything it has to offer. Oh, shark. Dark like brown or dark like AJ? No, I don't, yeah. I, I don't really know the difference. I'm not from here. Little AJ. Hey, score's even, Rush. We both got one. <laughs> I guess I'm just know how to pull on an AJ. If you want some pointers, follow my YouTube channel. You're fishing on these racks. Fishing might get a little slow, whatever. There's no reason to just sit idle and wait for fish to come to you, right? There's always something you can be doing. You like catching grouper? No, not really. <sighs> Big ones, right? Nope. Uh, we caught this blue runner earlier in the day. He's sitting in the well. Well, let's turn him into something. Let's turn him into something else. There's two things, either eat this one. Neat. Either big shark or big grouper. Pick you'll, your poison. You'll have a great time pulling on it. Oh, that didn't take long. <laughs> you sure you don't want this, right? <laughs> I'm good, buddy, I'm good. <laughs> all kinds of stuff on the bottom, right? We got Goliath grouper, we got Cobia. There's all kinds of stuff. That's a big one, yeah. <laughs> wow. Are you sure it's a big one? Pretty sure. 
Well, this could be some bycatch right here. Oh, I'm bit. You're bit? Yes, sir. It's just laying on the bottom. Oh, dude. I need to come that way at some point. What do you got? You fighting something? Yeah, I probably got a big cobia. That's what this feels like, just laying there. Nothing much changes when I switch from the Gulf to the Atlantic. I still bring my same arsenal, and that's gonna be my Pen 5500 slammers, and then a variety of different conventionals from Torx to Fathom. Do you have me? I don't think so. My guy's swimming out from under the boat, unless your guy's swimming under it. I got a big Kobe, Ollie, and there's another one following. I need the gaff. Oh. Yep. Professional as always. I got you, I got you. Uh, here. <laughs> I'm also thinking about to bring a big rod, whether it be a 30 or a 50 international loaded with heavy braid. People often say, why so many rods? Well, you have to be prepared for so many different fish. You want me? How you doing? Uh, he's, yeah, it's going great. Uh, here, here, here. I got, go get yours. Oh, nice fish. That is a big cobia, buddy. Woo! That's a pretty nice bycatch. You like that? Yeah. I okay. told you it was only going to be two things. <laughs> I just miscalled it. Oh, I'm off. What? Catching fish brings fish. I don't think catching these ever gets old. You, this is one of the first fish you caught, I think, down here. It was, I remember? mean, other than like snappers and stuff. On the surface iron, for sure. You know, you start to get that stuff moving. It's not happening as fast as you like. It's not as aggressive as you like. And it just builds and builds and builds until you can put together, you know, pretty good bite in less than ideal conditions. Cobia? Are you kidding me? You're hard on those cobias today, There's another buddy. one behind them, Ollie. The What's cute little fun? guy. Dude, you're on fire with these things. I can't get one to the boat. New two for two. I think we'll let this one go. We got a nice big one in the box. For sure, you know? You got all the cobia you need right now. It's a lot easier to stick a gaff in a cobia than it is to release a cobia. How would you guys like to see Ali land this fish right here? Do you hook him next to the boat or wrestle him and grab him by hand? I don't think that's gonna Tune well. back in and we're gonna, and we're gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we call them the big brown bears for a reason, and that's because they're big, they're brown, and they like to fight. I mean, can we grab them or no? It's not a gaff, it's a bee hooker. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to use a gaff. I got them all on now. Look at you. That went you way, are pro. You way are better pro. than expected. You Way are Way better than expected. Good job, buddy. Dude, Man. Stop you, catching. Hey, you can come work for me anytime. Stop catching all the cobias, would you? Leave some for someone else. All right, you're up. Damn. When you see a cobia on the surface, there's a very good chance there's a lot more of them around. There you go. Nice. What are you gonna do about that third rod? <laughs> no clue, buddy. That looked like a good one. You hooked there. I hope so. Cobia fishing is a lot of times all or nothing. I got this one on 40, so I'm trying to be gingerly with them. You just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting it out, and all of a sudden the chaos starts. Cobia fishing in January. You got another rod over there to deal with, too. <laughs> Do you really? Well, no, it's on this side, but. You got two anglers on the boat and 20 fish back there. That's a lot of chaos. I mean, you've heard of the tuna dance. We call this the cobia shuffle. Oh, come under. There you go. Come under, sir. You're, you're just ready to go, right? Uh, yeah, more or less. I can horse them. I'm going to back the drag all the way off on this. Tell me when you're ready. You can probably get them right here. Dude, there's cobia everywhere. If there's one species that's gonna catch you off guard and turn your day around really fast, it's a cobia. There you go. Nice fish, dude. Nice job. Nice fish. Go deal with yours, buddy. 
It's always a great day when at the end of the day, you have fish all over the boat and you're just starting to release these big cobia. Oh, just as we were saying. Perfect. Yeah. Dude, that's Good a job. nice fish to be releasing. That'll work. Awesome. Ah, man. That's fun. I told you when that tide slacks a little bit, they're gonna come floating up a little more. This is one of the few days you did not exaggerate <laughs> about the cobia fishing. Once you know they're there, you kind of got to assume any big fish you start pulling on is going to be a cobia. Whoa, that's a big one. Eat it, eat it, eat Watch it. Watch the blue runners. Get away from the blue runners. I'm trying, I'm trying. Jig it in front of them. Jig it in front of them. I'm trying, I'm trying. Watch okay. it, watch it. Uh, open it. Boom, hit him. Oh. Spit it. Right there, right there. He's ready to eat again. Oh, there you go. Time. Look, Look at the that size one. of that one. Look at that one. You, know, you want to go ahead and grab that for me, Rush? Uh, he looks a little I green. Think he's out. <laughs> he looks a little green. What a bite, huh? Right there. Watch your line, watch your line. One of my favorite fish to catch in Florida definitely is a cobia. And I've caught them from Central Florida all the way down to the Keys, with the Keys really being the best fishing I've seen for them. You're going to be there for a minute. Oh, I think so. He's coming hopefully back that, up. Hopefully that had the. Oh, that's a stud. Key to a good fishing trip is always flexibility. And you know, we were there to catch a mixed bag, but as luck would have it, our fishing trip turned into a cobia trip really good, quick. Good. Okay, bring, him, bring his head around one more time. Oh. There you go. Look at that! <laughs> what? Nice fish, dude. dude. We nice got some cobias together. That's a good one. That is a good one. God, look at that guy. Let me get my guy here. Well, now you can't say Jimmy caught you your biggest cobia. <laughs> that was a little stingy. I <laughs> told you know that. <laughs> that, was a, that was a year ago and it still hurts, huh? That was a little stingy. I didn't realize it, but I think my boy got his feelings a little hurt when we went fishing with Jimmy in the Everglades. <sighs> I think that's my biggest. And at the time, I said that was my biggest cobia ever. No. Yes. Yes, it is. They were bait fishing way bigger. Nah. Nah. So. Hey, Rush, don't don't be that guy. I didn't know it, but it was a little stingy for my man. There you go. On the top water. That is Ooh. just awesome. Awesome. That was a hell of a cobia bite today, buddy. We've caught a few cobia, and I think we can safely say this is the best bite. It's really not hard to understand why people come and fish with Rush or visit the Keys every winter. When you see them on the top water like that, just swimming around and they're whipped up like that, you can pretty, mu pretty much throw anything at them and they're gonna eat it. All uh, right, buddy, I say we let this guy go oh, and yeah. we start heading home. That tide's starting to change and yeah. it's gonna get a little sporty out here. Gonna get sporty, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> every trip's a little bit different. It's always got something to show you. And if you come with the right attitude, you're always gonna have a great time. Good day, man. Good that day. That is awesome. That is awesome.